Hi everybody and welcome back to my booktube channel Books with Leo and today I'm going to be talking about everything I read in the month of April. I read 11 books I think. I've read a lot of graphic novels which is fun because I haven't talked about comics or graphic novels as much on my channel lately. Um, I'm filming a vlog currently and I'm talking about multiple graphic novels in there so whilst I was saying this sentence I was like slightly confused but that's a different video and you'll see that upcoming week probably. <laughs> Some of you may have noticed we're sitting in a different spot in my apartment yet again. I like to switch things up and also the weather is so dark outside today that all of my regular filming spots were just too dark so I decided to make a nice filming spot at my dinner table. And fun fact, this dinner table is secondhand and it used to be in a big factory as a desk and now it's my dinner table which is just really cool. Um, and I love my dinner table and none of you care about my dinner table. You care about books. So let's talk some books Also, I kind of want to get these strappy things off. Okay, that's better I kind of want you to be able to see my top because I think this top is one of the cutest tops I own It's just that it's like it's a bit cold for the Netherlands right now. I'm still wearing it because it's just really cute <laughs> Let's get into the books. So the very first book I finished this month was Playing Bad Heroines by Emily M. Denforth and I believe that this book is right here. It is. I feel like I've talked about it for such a long time that I have like nothing to add. <laughs> but if you're new, welcome by the way, my name's Leora. For me, it took me a long time to read this book. In my terms, three months is like a long time. There were a lot of people in my comments who were like, you gave it a three stars, but you kept gushing about it. I don't get it. Personally, for me, I think three stars is a good rating. I think if I gave something three stars, that means I really enjoyed it. If I gave it four stars, that means I thought it was really, really good and I really enjoyed it. And if I gave it five stars, that means I thought it was really, really good. I enjoyed it. And also it's just like so amazing. I don't want to read anything else ever again, but I will. You know, it's like, if I gave it five stars, it's like the holy grail. That means I really, really thought it was the best thing ever. Three stars means it's like a favorite of that moment, but just not a favorite of all time. And it's just like, I really enjoyed it, but it's not like, wow, you know? I feel, <laughs> I don't know, my, my rating system is also just a bit loosey-goosey. So like, I get it if sometimes you're left confused. Um, when I gave it two stars, that means I was like, there was things I enjoyed, but there's also things I didn't enjoy. And it was just like, meh. And one star means I just thought it was not good. <laughs> so yeah, that was a little explanation on my ratings. I think for this book, I'm not sure if it's a favorite, but at the same time, I did really like it. And the thing I mostly liked about this was the atmosphere, but there were also so many things that I did not like, especially the way it wrapped up. Um, and I think that's why I landed on three stars, but I did really enjoy it, so that's why it's not a two stars. <laughs> Plain Bad Heroines is a story of two girls who are in love and they're in boarding school and they get murdered by wasps in a forest, basically. And there's this whole mystery with this old book and we also follow the headmistress and her girlfriend and their story and their mystery wrapped into the book and all these mysterious deaths in the boarding school and separate relationships are taking place in like 191 or something like that or no i think it's even earlier oh 192 i was not far off and then we also follow the current day perspective and we follow a couple of hollywood actresses as they are going to the boarding school current day to film a movie about everything that happened in 192 and all of the main cast is sapphic or like bisexual or a lesbian or pansexual. I'm not sure if there's any pansexuals in here. I forgot because <laughs> I finished this at the beginning of the month. But it's a very queer book and there's lots of sapphic relationships in there. If you've read it, there's especially one scene in the Orangerie, which is basically like the greenhouse. And it's like all these girls, they're kissing each other. It's a really nice scene. Like the atmosphere is so beautiful. It's like wonderful and I think that's one of the main points I loved so much about this book and is also why I would recommend it to a lot of people because the atmosphere is just so good and beautiful. The thing I didn't like is especially how the modern timeline of the story wrapped up because it just felt so like it just sort of fizzled out like nothing happened really with the modern storyline at the end. That was really sad to me because I felt like it had so much potential and then it just sort of ended you know there was no real conclusion and the historical storyline had a bit of a better conclusion but still I wasn't blown away, so that's a little bit sad, but I would recommend it if you're into dark academia stories or queer stories, sapphic stories, any of those things. 
and it's also a really beautiful book. It has lots of illustrations inside as well, which is really nice. I haven't read books with illustrations in a long time, so that was really cool. And it was just one of those wonderful books that you can disappear into for like a whole afternoon and just have a good time. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this. Then I read Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I think you all know that I am the biggest Talia Hibbert fan. And I've talked about this book a couple of times on this channel as well already. The entire Brown Sisters series by Talia Hibbert is just a series that is so near and dear to my heart. All the characters, I would like die for them. <laughs> They're just all so lovely. Basically, you follow a different sister in each of the books. And in each of the books, the sister has like a romance. So she falls in love with a guy. There's like a development and there's usually some more serious themes and things sort of wrapped into the rest of the story. And in this book, we follow Eve. She's having a hard time choosing what she wants to do with her life. She's very outgoing. She does all these different things, but she has issues sticking to one thing and really going for it. And her parents basically say to her, Eve, we're cutting you off. You have to figure out what you want to do with your life and succeed at something and not just quit every time it gets hard. Um, I had a little bit of a tough time connecting to our protagonist, Eve, in the beginning, because I just felt like she was annoying. <laughs> Um, also she reminded me of myself and I know a lot of people love relating to main characters and I do too but not when they're showing the worst parts of myself <laughs> I don't like that at the same time she's really lovable she's outgoing she does all these different things she's not scared you know which is cool I, I am scared of, of lots of things <laughs> and then our love interest what was his name again Jacob Jacob is our love interest and he runs an Airbnb and it's such a lovely Airbnb romance, basically. These two, they do not get along in the beginning, which is fun to read about. It's like one of my favorite tropes in romance when the two love interests like dislike each other at the beginning. Uh, it's not quite enemies to lovers, but it's more like just dislike to lovers, I guess. I just changed some of the lightning up a bit because it was getting really bright and yeah. I'm not filming all that intro again, so editing Leo is going to have to deal with this. Jacob runs the Airbnb and he's basically looking for a new chef or a new cook, a new baker, and Eve applies for the job. She does this really on a whim. She's like, she's driving past, her parents just told her off. She's like, a job opening? Yes, let's do it. She's very impulsive, but then something blossoms between them. And I think a lot of the conversations surrounding autism and love and autism combined, and also Eve's things she does to cope with all the struggles inside her head and there was just so many things in this book that are so valuable to read about in romance and that I thought were so nice that they were put in this book. Also Talia Hibbert just writes with such humour and like it's almost as if she enjoys writing so much and you notice that when reading her books it's like so obvious that she loves writing which is just really great. So this book um, was a five star for me. Again, like I think every book in this series and it just made me really happy. It was super enjoyable. And yeah, if you want a nice pick me up, if you want to feel good inside, <laughs> I would highly recommend this book. Then I read The White Album by Joan Didion. Joan Didion is a well-known journalist and feminist. And this book is mainly essays from her from I think the 1960s till the 1970s. She writes about all sorts of topics in this book. I think especially the rock and roll parts and the true crime parts of this book were just really cool to me. Like she's in the studio with the doors. She talks to some of the Charles Manson girls. That's just really fascinating to read about. And also some of the essays on the end um, about cool figures in the 70s were really fun to read. And I think Joan Didion is so melodramatic, but I like that. I think it's nice. Um, it's just some of the essays in the middle of this book, I just couldn't care less about them. I was just like, I don't care, Joan. She was like talking about the highway and stuff in America. And I can see maybe if you're American or if you're really interested in American culture, then this would be really cool. But I didn't care about the highways or the Hoover Dam. I just, I really don't care. I'm sorry. But I like Joan Didion and I enjoyed this read. I think I gave it three and a half stars or something like that. Not sure, but yeah, it was really cool. Then I read Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This was such a wild ride. Like going into this book, I wasn't sure what to expect. It was quite a dark book. Let me say that first. It was dark and it made me think and feel loads of different things. The synopsis on Goodreads compares it to The Handmaid's Tale and I kind of see that comparison. It's about Lena Johnson and when her grandmother dies, she and her mother are left with a lot of debt 
and she has no way of really paying it off. So she decides to drop out of college and her mother is really against her dropping out of college. So she tries to hide it from her as well, but she has like no other choice. She's like pushed into this decision um, because otherwise, you know, they won't have water or food or gas. And so Lena gets this letter of a medical experimenting program um, and she would get paid really well for it. She would have to keep it a secret though from everybody in her life. And she decides to participate in this program. And this book just basically highlights how marginalized people in our societies are pushed into unsafe positions in our societies. It's about poverty, it's about family, it's about medical racism. It was so fascinating and a very impactful read. I think I read it in two days, I was really engrossed in the story. I think Megan Giddings has this sort of dry way of telling a story that just really hits you hard. Like her writing style is really fitting for the story she's telling in this book. And I also think that at other parts, her writing is really dreamlike. So she, she can do it all, you know? I think she's a really wonderful writer. This book hit me hard. It made me think. And some of the mysteries that Lena is encountering inside the medical center are really interesting as well. It was not like a happy read, that's for sure. But it was definitely something worth reading and worth my time. So I'm not sure how many stars I gave it. I think, oh, four. I gave it four stars. Yeah. So I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, yes. Then I read a couple of volumes of By Night, which is a graphic novel series by John Ellison. And I read single issues one, two, and three, and I read those spread out through the month. I don't know. I think the first two I enjoyed most. It's about these two girls who are old friends from back in the day, and they discover this portal to a different dimension. And yeah, that's really all I can say without spoiling too much. Every single issue of this graphic novel series is from a different character's perspective, which I thought was really cool because that way you get to connect to all of them. This also made me dislike the third one. Well, not dislike. Like I just liked it the least of the three because I didn't really care about the guy in that one, which was sad. And I also thought it was a bit like all over the place, the third one, but I'm definitely going to continue this series because I had a fun time and I like the way John Ellison writes his graphic novel stories and also the illustration style is always so clean and nice to look at. So that's really cool. Right, another thing I read this month was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hong and this book was so much fun. It was a lovely romance. There was so much smut in this book. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever read a book with this much smut. It was like every other page they were going at it. It was it was a lot, but it was good. <laughs> it was so good. Small side note, I was reading it in Dutch and like dirty talk is so not sexy in Dutch. And it was just when they were talking about her pussy, <laughs> they were saying like push it in Dutch. I was just like, no, <laughs> stop it. Don't say that. Don't say that. It's just no. <laughs> so it just, it has like a different connotation in Dutch. And I get why the translator chose for that word, but it's just like, no, no, I disagree. <laughs> this story is about Stella Lane and she's an econometrist. She's a brilliant, she's so smart, but she also has autism and she's sort of having a tough time navigating her love life. And she's like, she doesn't really care that much about her love life personally, but her mum thinks she needs a boyfriend. Instead of letting her mother set her up again with some guy, because like her past experiences with men have been really horrible. She doesn't enjoy sex. She's never really felt connection to anybody she's dated. She decides to sort of fix this problem, fix her social awkwardness and hire an escort. And he can teach her everything having to do with relationships. He can teach her sex. He can teach her to be the perfect girlfriend and she can practice being in a relationship. Uh, but then she hires the escort. His name is Michael and they fall in love, of course. It's just a wonderful story about choosing for your family and also your passions in life, about learning to handle your boundaries with other people, but also about autism and being in love and uh, autism in women and the author writes in her author note at the end of the book as well about her experiences with autism and being diagnosed at a later age and how important it is for women to see more positive autism representation because especially women don't get um, diagnosed as easily as men do and yeah I thought that was all such valuable content and at the same time it's also such a fun lovely romance so witty so funny and built with 
loads of great smart to be honest so if you want a heated adult book with lots of exciting scenes then i would highly recommend this one and then i reread shadow and bone i wanted to reread it before i saw the netflix show and it was i had such a fun time rereading this book um, I have a beautiful physical copy gifted to me by Fairy Loop, but I don't have it right now because I lent it to one of my best friends because he wanted to read it as well. I was just pumped to reread this book um, because I've seen all the trailers, I've been following everything having to do with the Netflix show, and I was just really excited. Lee Badugo is one of my favourite authors, and I just... Ah, <laughs> it's just so exciting when there's a Netflix show coming out of one of your favourite fantasy worlds. And, you know, I've been anticipating this since 2019, I think, or maybe even earlier. So that was really exciting. And I had such a fun time rereading this book. I never really liked the Grisha trilogy, to be honest. I just really like Six of Crows, but I had such a fun time rereading this. I liked it way more than the first time I read it. And I think that's mostly having to do with me back then having really high expectations and just feeling kind of let down. And now I had really low expectations because I never really liked this trilogy, but I really enjoyed it. Also, I always used to ship Alina with the Darkling more because I just thought like, ooh, villain, so hot. <laughs> But now I'm totally shipping Mal and Alina, especially after watching the Netflix show. I haven't seen everything yet because I'm slow. I'm really slow with these things. Um, it took me like three months to watch The Queen's Gambit, you know, so <laughs> it's been a week. Give me some time. I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I haven't even explained what these books are about. I feel like you sh I shouldn't have to, you know, I feel like you already know, but you probably don't. God, where do I even start? It's basically about this world, which is inspired by Russia, like Tsarist Russia. And there's people who have magical powers, the Grisha, and there's normal people. And you have the first army and the second army. And the first army are the normal people. The second army are the Grishas. And they're fighting a war against two countries on their borders. But there's also this scary black sort of wall that has monsters inside of it. And they have to travel through that to get to the other side of the country. And the only thing that could possibly destroy this wall is a Sun Summoner. But a Sun Summoner has never existed. And yeah, we follow a map maker, Alina, who turns out to be the Sun Summoner. Um, and that's not a spoiler, I think, because that's like literally the plot. It's a really fun fantasy series. It's a classic on booktube as well. And I think it's a great way to prepare for the Netflix show to reread this. And I had a lot of fun doing so. I'm so excited to talk about this next book because the next book I read in April was Mellow Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Ah! I'm just so excited to talk about this book. It was a five stars for me. And Taylor Jenkins Reid has been one of my favorite authors ever since I read Evelyn Hugo. And oh, this was so good once again. So this book is about the Reaver siblings, the children of Mick Reaver. And they're all surfers or models. They all have different things. There's like a surfer, a photographer, a model. All of these siblings live near Malibu on like the beach and like close to the beach, which it's just, it has such great summer vibes. It's amazing. And basically Nina Reaver, who's our main character, who's also the eldest daughter, has this big beach party every year. We basically read of the day following up to the party and then the party and the aftermath and it's just this big social gathering and all these different people having different ties with each other like all these hollywood people but also surfer people and famous people and all the ties and dramas they have with each other but mostly it's a story that is really about having big love for your family and appreciating your family and family bonds but one of the other big themes in this story is choosing for yourself and again, you know, Taylor Jenkins Reid just did it again. It's like such a big dramatic story that like sweeps you off your feet. And I just, I cried, I laughed. I just, I had such a good time and I felt so emotional for days after reading this. It was just so good. I think it's coming out on June 1st, um, which is really fitting uh, because one of our characters is called June. And it's just, it's so beautiful. I highly recommend you all to go check it out. I really, really loved it. And I'm so excited for more people to read this story when it finally comes out. And I also want to thank Penguin Random House for sending me an arc of this book because it was so exciting that I got to read it before the release date. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It was so good. Okay, then I read Fat Lip by Hannah O'Donnell. Hannah is one of my friends here on BookTube and she's also an author. I've also designed the front cover for her newest book, which is really exciting. Ah, so exciting. And... 
this is basically an anthology of love stories. It's scenes from her life about dating, about love, about being single, family dynamics, mother-daughter relationships. It was so good. I didn't expect it to be this good. And I know it's a little bit rude. I'm sorry, Hannah. I just, I expected me to like it, you know, but I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars because at the end, there were some stories I didn't really connect with. It's not to say that a book always has to connect with me in order for it to be good. But like in order for me to give it five stars, I have to really connect with it. And I did connect with a lot of these stories, especially about mother daughter relationships, but also the stories about dating. And especially this one where she's talking to guys on dating apps. Like there were some passages in here that were just so funny, like laughing out loud funny. I think if you love Dolly Alderton's book, All About Love, which is one of my favorites, you will absolutely adore this too. And yeah, support an independent author and buy Hannah's book because it was so good. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Can't wait for her next book to come out because I illustrated the front cover. So that's really exciting as well. I'm just really excited overall. <laughs> the last book I read in April was Alice from Dream to Dream by Giulio Maccaioni. This is a graphic novel about a girl who has a special power. She can go into other people's dreams and she can sort of visit their dream sequences as long as she sleeps in the same room as them and she's having a really tough time because her family's going through a tough spot and she and her brother have to share a room but he's really into horror and he keeps having these really horrible nightmares that are keeping her from sleep as well because she keeps living his nightmares it's like involuntary she can't really do anything with her power yet she can't control it so she's having a tough time she's also being bullied at school it's just a tough time all around and basically she discovers this mystery having to do with her aunt and her best friend as well yeah she learns to use her power in this story she tries to unravel the mystery of her long lost aunt because her aunt has been missing for many years and it's really cool it's really magical the drawings are beautiful some of the paneling it's just oh it's so well done i love the drawing style especially the way the hairs are drawn like so dramatic and big and beautiful um i read this in a vlog so that vlog will be up soon and you'll be able to see it which is really cool this was a really cool graphic novel and i would highly recommend it if you want to check out something cool let's now talk about something i'm reading currently which is a beautifully foolish endeavor and i'll be finishing this i don't think i'll be finishing it in april because i'm only like a little bit in i'm loving it i love everything hank green writes um i loved the previous novel in this series as well and i'm loving this one too um, this is a sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, and An Absolutely Remarkable Thing was a sci-fi novel about all these statues that appeared in all over the world, and it made great comments on internet culture and being internet famous and what that does to a person, being an influencer, but also society and the way we live online, and this book is doing the same so far, but just in new and different exciting ways, and just Hank Green's mind, it's, it keeps astonishing me. So this is really good so far and I can't wait to read more. I really hope you enjoyed watching this and let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the same books that I've read or what you read in April. Is there anything you really enjoyed? And let me know what you thought of this video as well in the comments down below. And if you don't know what to comment but you would like to announce your presence <laughs> or leave a comment, then just comment some cute pig emojis down below. I think I love pigs. I think pigs are such cute animals with the little snouts. So yeah, or any cute animal emoji is welcome and I will see you all in my next video. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!